Well, hello. Hello. And welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. <laughs> That's right. Good job. See what happens when you fiddle with things? I'm Ray. And if you're wondering, we do like each other quite a bit. We do like each other quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> you're such a jerk. Um, and uh, Today yes. is Sunday, May 14th. No, it's April. April 14th of 2024. Uh, we are coming to you a day late. But this is also But not a dollar short, quite a few dollars short, as you see we'll see in our pile over here. And this is episode one oh eight of our YouTube channel. (laughs) You are out of control. Look there. I know. It's one oh nine. Let's start again. Hello everyone. Welcome. (laughs) Of our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting and crocheting, yarn dyeing, sewing um, now. Sewing. Yarn buying. There is some spinning, but it's over there. I forgot to get it, and there's not much, but I did do some spinning. So, we hope you guys are ready to buckle up. Um, It's probably going to be a long one. Yeah. We did do um, a lot of damage to the bank Mm. this past weekend, Mm -hmm. so we'll have some goodies to show for you. We have some FOs and some whips. We've been busy. We have. We've it's been, been busy. It's been a good two weeks. So we're just going to jump in with that and how our two weeks has been. Has been? Yeah. Great. So we are freshly back from our trip to Vermont. Yay. We are now Ver- Vermonters. Yeah. Ver- Vermont- Vermontarians. Vermonters. Vermontians. We like Vermont. We do. It was a lovely time. It was. It's our second time being there. Yeah. But well, the- this one we stayed for multiple days. We, we only stayed for a night um, last year right. on our way back from Montreal. But yeah, so we stayed in Ludlow, Vermont with two of our friends, uh, Megan and Sherry, and we got an Airbnb. It actually ended up being the perfect week to go because apparently this upcoming week, everything closes for about a month. For, for spring m- break. For mud season. No, for spring break. It's mud season now. Oh. So, like, there's a couple of different things. Like, so some places close because of mud season and some places close because of spring break. I don't know. But, yes, to your point, you're correct. It was a perfect time to go. Yes. It wasn't all, like, uh, touristy or anything like that. We had amazing food and we did a lot of, like, local... We enjoy going to local Mm -hmm. restaurants, like, really small places, small shops. So, our first evening there or actually on our way there and we'll show the stuff later we stopped at harrisville harrisville designs Designs in harrisville new hampshire we went to a couple of you actually had recommended like a little cafe type of place right up the hill from it so we went there first we got lunch um we met some ladies who recognized us so that was really fun that was kind of unexpected yeah we like heard the term you heard the term short row short row and you're like i think they're knitters yeah (laughs) um so i really try to like listen in to see if i could hear any other knitting terms isn't it funny like what we pick up on yeah and all you need to hear is like short row like where else would that be so we did that and then we went to harrisville design hung out there for a little bit did some shopping that's a beautiful store it really is absolutely beautiful beautiful and they have Not only their yarn, I also saw Peace Fleece and some Spin Cycle there. They had Brooklyn Tweed. And Brooklyn Tweed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those were the four. They also had fiber that you could buy. Yeah. Um, I did not buy any fiber from there. So that was really nice. We got some patterns. um, And some yarn, of course, to go uh, with that. Yeah. I found a beautiful sweater that I want to do. I guess we could talk about it now. Whatever. It's going to be a long episode. Buckle up. You know, we're comfortable. Hopefully you have comfortable clothes as well. Um, there's this sweater that I found on Instagram, um, from Harrisville Designs. It's using Aaron Weight yarn. We'll have this link down below. It's called the Kennaway. It's a, a all over cabled sweater. I thought it was really cool. And it's using their, uh, this new yarn called, um, uh, uh, sheer Marie. It's a Merino Dorset. Uh, blend which i did end up getting some they didn't have they're all sold out of the errand so i'm waiting for the errand weight to come out it's totally affordable like i think it's like 10 or 11 dollars a skein something like that um and it's so soft so i'm waiting for that to come because i i want to do that sweater anyway that was my plan going into that place but then they were sold out of that yarn so we had to we had to uh renegotiate our plans which Um. then 
presented itself in buying large quantities of yarn and patterns. Correct. Right. And then after we left Harrisville, we went to Green, Green Mountain Green. Spinnery, which is in Vermont. I don't recall the town. And that was... A smaller shop, yeah. like their their shop area, because it is a working mill. So the yep. mill was working. Uh, we did not take a tour. No, but um, you could see like, you know, through and it, you walk in and you're immediately like, whoa, I'm sheep. Yeah, sheep. Hello, sheep. Um, but you could see like see in all of the, the skeins of yarn that were dyed and are drying. They're all hung up. You can see the people in the back kind of working um, on the in the mill. It was really a neat yeah, kind of thing for sure. small store. Yeah, small store. We said that the their booth at Rhinebeck is larger yeah. than the like the yeah. little shopping area there. Um so that was super cute. Mm-hmm. We made a couple of The woman of was very there. very sweet, yeah. you know, behind the counter. I I, I wish I remember I remember to ask what her name was, but there was another couple in there um who had some questions about the yarn and they were from overseas. So they had a lot of questions regarding worsted spun versus woolen spun. You know, and the, how we consider worsted weight yarn where they, you know, maybe in some countries in Europe don't usually use that term worsted weight. It was just interesting to hear right. that dialogue. Because they use Aran. Aran yeah. is a more common um, Or they go weight. by their plies. Like, right. you know, like if you know that like a four ply is, you know, a sock yarn or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Whatever the rules are. But um, it was just it, interesting to have that, <clears throat> to hear that. Yeah. And then we headed to our Airbnb, Airbnb after... Um, Green Mountain, Mm -hmm. and then we hung out in Vermont. We spent a day in Weston. That was really nice. That was our Thursday there. We hit up a couple local uh, shops. We went to the Vermont Country Store, the original one, and had a blast in there. We did. We're not going to show you what we got there. No, that we'd be here for a couple days. Yeah, we we went a little overboard. And then the following day, we went to Chester, Mm -hmm. and we stopped by the Six Loose Ladies yarn shop. Yes, we did. We went to a couple other small shops there and made some purchases, and we just had really good food. Yeah. We went to little we did, pubs, and, and two, we went to like two antique shops. Yeah, uh, which was kind of fun. One of them was huge. Yeah, Can't remember it really the name was. Of it. Um, I think I, I have a picture of us in front of it, but it was humongous, and we probably spent a good hour. No, we were definitely there longer than an hour. Longer than that? Yeah, because it had two huge rooms. Oh, that's the Vermont Country Store. Maybe I didn't get a picture of us. No, somebody did. Oh wait, though. no, that's the candy place. We we went to so many places. It was so much fun, just like like talking to the locals and everything, and yeah. hearing the interactions with these small t- in these small towns. Like it seemed like everybody knew their name, you know? Yeah. Oh hey John, you know how's it going? How's the wife? You know? Whatever. Yeah, it's such a different vibe than yeah. what we have here. Everybody was very nice, <clears throat> and. We spent every evening in the hot tub, which was oh, fantastic. Was great. We did play one of those games. We talked about it last year. It's called Hunt a Killer, mm-hmm. and I just highly recommend it. We have a blast doing it. We spent like four hours working on it, and that was so much fun. Yeah, and they then, have different episodes or different like you know uh, crimes that you solve, and yeah. some of them get very very intense. This one was very involved. This was a medium difficulty and recommended like four to six hours of gameplay. We definitely spent about four hours yeah. um, trying to figure out. There's like police reports to read and pictures to look at and bank statements to review, codes to decipher. It was really, really fun um, for the four of us. So highly recommend. To Hunt a Killer is the brand. And then if you go to their website, you can see all the different games. And we've been getting them at Target. So yeah. if you have a Target near you, it's possible that you could get one there if you're interested. Yeah. And then on our way home yesterday... We got to stop and have lunch with our friend Michelle from Woolens and Ash, who we adore. Adore. It was so nice to be able to do that. <clears throat> yeah, we sat down. I something winery. So it was called the Vineyard. Oh, the Vineyard. Okay. Yeah, uh, Putnam's Vineyard, and it was in. Um, I don't know. White. White River Junction. White Vermont. River Junction, Vermont. It was a really cool, like hip little place. So vine yard and like i read it as vineyard at first but it's all like plants or plants everywhere really fun space to just come in find a spot sit down hang out there were like other a bunch of other knitters there so we brought our knitting we just chatted we met michelle's daughter um we got some like cheese boards and different fantastic food such good like picky stuff we had great conversation i know it was just a beautiful way to end i think our trip yes yeah um, and then we drove home. And then we drove home. and what Which else? was also nice to be home. Yeah, yeah. No matter absolutely. how much fun like you have, it's sometimes nice just to be to be home. 
And what else over the last two weeks? We had an earthquake. We did. So that was Well, fun. New Jersey had an earthquake. We felt it. We felt it for sure. Yeah. My... Um, I thought animals were in the upstairs of the house or a burglar. Um, so that was fun. Yeah. I'm really proud of you that you were going to go confront the burglar. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. It's dangerous. I beat him with all the yarn in this room. Yeah, but you didn't bring a weapon. Yeah, the yarn's really going to make a big difference. I could Maybe this is why people don't think we like each other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else did we do over two weeks? Oh, I. That we also had that solar eclipse, yeah. which was visible here. I think we had like ninety-two to ninety-four percent coverage. Yeah, and on that day, I went and hung out with Kim and Kate of the Knitting Posse and Jane, who taught us how to sew a garment, which I'll show in a little bit. And that was lovely. We hung out and watched the eclipse. Um, Kim's husband Jay had some solar eclipse glasses there for us. So we did that and hung out. This is a picture of our total, or not our totality, but the what it looked like for us. I took this picture through the um, the glasses, the eclipse glasses, and it was really kind of neat. Like how you know, it was it was a cool experience. I thought, yeah, it was very interesting. So being in Vermont, Vermont had a hundred percent totality mm -hmm. right so a lot of people traveled there one of the shop owners was talking to us and we even heard people talking just like in town at the restaurants on how busy they were because of the number of people in the area so um so yeah so that was kind of i think all everything for our two weeks yeah right we did a lot of watching wait till you hear yeah we've watched a lot of tv yeah. um so let's jump into admin -y stuff oh crud right well, we'll have to do that next time. Let's just add, can you add a reminder to our calendar? I sure can. Please. So our kid along is now ended. Yes. Um, and thank you to everybody who participated. We um, have three prizes that we're going to be giving away. Thank you so much to the ladies over um, at uh, Yarnia. I'll just remind you of the prizes that we have. So these are three kits. They were really cute, and um, I have a couple of the completed ones over here. These are the Woobles, um, which I think are just super cute. Like, learn how to crochet, but even if you want the little guy, like, super easy. There's some really cool tutorials in there to help you out, but we have to, uh, for the prizes, we have Billy the Unicorn, which Dorps. I have done. We have Fred the Dinosaur, Cutie oops, patootie. which is super cute. Um, I have still yet to do him. I do have the kit, though. I was going to do that for Dominic. And then this is um, Pierre the Penguin, which I had done as well. Yes. So we're going to be giving those away, uh, which I thought was really, really nice of them. So thank you, ladies. And then we'll pick winners and announce those next week. Yes. And then the only other thing we have going on right now is our clockwork knit along. So that is the clockwork shawl by Stephen West. Uh, we showed a finished version of it last week. Ray had finished we a did. sample with some of my yarn. There are two versions and you are more than welcome to knit either one. One is the original and there is a brioche version as well. And we've been getting tagged in a bunch of them and yep. they are stunning. You guys are doing an amazing job with this knit along. I actually need to cast mine on still. So. Look how beautiful this one is. This one um, was, we were just tagged in this one. It's by Cinder Grace Crochet. I love the colors. Yeah, it's a again. If you guys haven't Look how tried pretty. it, definitely give it a shot. It's a, um, it's such a good knit. It's very yeah. wearable. Yeah, it's a, um, and this was their first, very first knit shawl. So That's congratulations. Amazing. Yeah, I think you did a fantastic job. Beautiful. And then the only other thing is, is that in, in two weeks is Connecticut Sheep and Wool, which I think is North Haven. So we're going to go and hang out there for a little bit. So if you see us, um, stop by and say hi. Yeah. And then our next podcast will also be recorded on a Sunday because we'll be going to Sheep and Wool on Saturday. Yeah. All right. So that's all that fun stuff. So let's talk about some making. Let's do I it. I have one FO. I have two. All right. So you may proceed. Okay. So these are finally finished. I've been talking about these for a while. These were my um, just keep in a bag and when I'm like waiting in line to get my hair cut, blah, 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 whatever the case is, I just add a couple of rows to them. These are my um, So This Is Love sock set um, by 
collaboration between Woolens and Nosh and Earth Tones Girl, uh, Denise. Beautiful. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful the stripes color. look so good. Um, it came with a uh, a contrasting mini or coordinating mini, really, which is the same color as one of these stripes in here. Mm -hmm. I opted to just do the heels just because these were like, I just wanted to go round and round and round and not have to worry, um, you know, if I was at like the waiting in line someplace or whatever I was, you know, wherever I was knitting these. But I think that they look so good um, just with the heel yeah. in here, you know. Um, anyway, I did uh, German Twisted Cast On, which is my cast on of choice for socks. I think it's because I do them cuff down. Uh, 72 stitches. I did a two by two rib for um, four color for four color stripes. Um, I didn't really measure them, but it's it's a bit a little bit less than two inches. Maybe it's about an inch and a half of ribbing. Um, and then I knit my leg. I did a cut in afterthought heel. With the heel, um, I add for my heel um, to fit my foot the best. I add five rows of straight knitting before I start my decreases. And the decreases are done the exact same way as I do my toe decreases. Um, and then for my toe, I decrease down to 20 stitches every other round. And then I decrease every round at 20 stitches every round until I get down to 14. And that's on each needle. On each needle. And then um, and then I go ahead and graft the, the toe together. So that's that fits my foot. Have you changed that? I feel like you used to go down to 12. I've done 12 before. Yeah. Um, on some, but I find that this one gives me a little bit of a, like a wider, um, across, your across my yep. toes and it doesn't like pull it in as much. So that's pretty much, um, how I do my socks. I really, um, I really love them. Honestly, Michelle's base, this is the hundred or I'm sorry, um, 90% Targi and 10% nylon blend superwash. It's about 411 yards uh, per 100 grams, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, I just, I can't say enough about her yarn. You guys know, if you've been around for a while, just how obsessed we are with her yarn. Yeah, it's so, a beautiful base. Yeah, and isn't that so pretty? Yeah. I think that's so pretty. It's they a very did a good great job. Yeah, it really is. Um. So what else can I say about them? That's really, those are my socks. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, so I have one FO, and it is not knitting. I'm now a sewer. Oh, look at you. Sewist. Sewist. So I've made a pair of pajama pants. Yay. With an elastic waist. I did opt to do no like button fly or fly. That's too complicated for me right now in my um, journey. So this is, I don't even know the name of this pattern. It was one. So Jane, who taught us how to do this, thank gosh, too, because I forgot the power cord to my sewing machine, so I got to use her sewing machine, and it was really nice. It was um, a Bernina 440, maybe Aurora, I think, and it has, like, this... So in the front of it, there's this metal bar that you insert, and it's for your knee to push the footer up and down, so that was pretty convenient. Oh. Uh, let's see. What can I say about these? I got the fabric on sale at some fabric store in Norwalk because I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So this was the most, this was the fabric that I was most likely to wear that wasn't super florally or like holiday themed. It's very cute. So I just went with some polka dots and it took a while to cut the pieces out the front and the back and I messed that up and I think for the front piece I measured and cut for an extra large mm. which is for a I think it was for a 36 inch waist which is a little bit larger than my waist but I figured with the elastic I'd be okay but then for the back piece mm. I traced my pattern incorrectly and i think i did a double x so there was quite a difference in length on the back compared to the front but it worked out well i think my finishing is pretty good i think my 
This is your first garment that you ever sewed, correct? Yes, this is my first garment. I have sewn before. I did sew a quilt for mm-hmm. Reese. And I sewed like... Some bags. Some project bags for us really, really early on. But I haven't touched the sewing machine, honestly, in about four years. And I just wanted some experience. And working with somebody who is experienced in person yeah. is very different than you know, online. So that was really nice. And we had a, um, I had a good time doing it. Yeah. It's really, really nice. So I still have the, I still have the tracing paper that I used to cut out, but I don't know that I can make this pair again because I cut out the wrong sizes. So yes, this is my, um, those are my lounge pants. Now, do they feel nice when you put them on? Yeah, they're really comfortable. Like, I will say, I feel like I have some extra fabric in, a little extra fabric in the back and the front. Okay. But other than that, they're super comfortable. They fit well. They go down, like, they're not too long. I think that the hem, you know, hemmed them at the right spot. They're even. The legs, Great. so that's good. They're, one's not longer than the other. So mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I thought, yeah, they fit well. I like it. Yeah, that's so really Who knows? Cool. Maybe we'll have some more sewing in the future. Can't wait. No, Our I dining don't. room needs some more things in it. I know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Next, I have... I don't have the yarn. Where's the yarn? Left over. Oh, I know. It's at the... Sock machine, because I was I had intention of throwing them into tubes, the leftover. But that's okay. Let's see what we can um, let's see what we can do here. So um, this is something new that you have not seen. It was not cast on um, on the last episode, but I had finished my clockwork, which is we're going to use as a sample for Kevin's yarn. So I wanted to cast on another uh, project with Kevin's yarn in it for an additional sample. Uh, and I thought, you know, I've been kind of itching for brioche, so I thought a brioche project would be really nice, and I chose the Harlow, um, by Dre Renee Knits. It is a brioche, um, beanie, and we have each knit these before. I've knit them on the, I've done the worsted weight version, the Harlow worsted, but I've never done the fingering weight version. So um, the pattern calls for uh, one skein each of a main color and a contrast color. The th- cool thing about brioche is that it's reversible. I wanted a really high contrast uh, with this. To, I think it'll show. And I thought it it does a good job of showing off the um, the yarn. So it's fingering weight. Um, I did the second size in here because I thought for a sample it would be good to fit majority of people's heads plus brioche is very very stretchy yeah um and i know the worsted weight one that i made before uh seemed a little bit too big so i went down um i went down a size and um yeah i think it i think it turned out really well so the yarns that i use is uh here it is i think they look really really cool together i have not soaked this or blocked it yet um so i'll give this a, a dip um just to kind of expand the stitches a little bit more But the red color or orangey color is uh, Flame On. And then the lighter color is Is Winter Steel. Winter Steel. Which Winter Steel is actually not in the shop right now. Okay. Um, So this is the quote unquote right side of uh, of the hat. And then reverse, which is my favorite. This is the uh, technically the wrong side of the hat. So I think it looks really, really cool. Now... I did have a boo-boo with my decreases um, at first in this pattern, and then they made sense. So I did, you know, I did keep my mistake in there because, and you can you can see a little bit of a yeah, whatever. But who cares, really? Um, but that's just the way that I roll. So it fits. Um, it fits really nicely. I think. It's a, I love mine. It's a very, very... Yeah, and I love the fingering weight version. Yeah, um, I agree. So it's totally, you know, a beanie. You can certainly, depending on, you know, your dome size, you can fold up the brim if you if you want to, you know, because I think that still looks kind of... That's actually still looks really, really cool. Um, like that. But I like this. I like the inside, the wrong side better. Anyway. 
Um, super easy knit. <clears throat> I think it's a good introduction to brioche. Me too. I know that the decreases could be tricky, but to do a two color brioche project in the round makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, it's just a hat. So That's you're right. not having to rip out a larger project no. if you need to. So I, I definitely would recommend it if you want to try brioche. Same. And I would recommend before starting your decreases, if if um, mistakes bother you or, you know, whatever, um, is to put in a lifeline. Does she have a tutorial, I don't recall, on the decreases? Uh, yes, I believe she does. Okay. But I, so interesting, this pattern, the decreases in this pattern are different than the decreases in the Harlow Worsted. Yeah, because of the size. I think it's because of the stitch count. Um, that's there. So I think in my brain, because I'd done two of those Harlow worsted, I was anticipating a similar, um, decrease. Uh, and that just wasn't the case with this. The decreases are super easy. Once you, you understand like what you're doing, yeah. they are super easy. You just, just follow them. But I think I got in my own way on that one, but really who cares? I mean, it's not, it looks, it still looks really cool. Um, the only thing, yeah. Cause you could just see like the yarn is in the front mm. on some of these um, spots. This was my first row of decreases. But who cares? I did a two-color tubular cast-on, uh, which is the recommendation in the pattern. Um, so that just really makes it so that, you know, either side that you wear it, it'll look, um, you know, finished. That's super easy to do, and I did follow her tutorial for that one. She's got a video tutorial uh, for that two-color excuse me uh, tubular cast on but it's super squishy it's so soft the base for these both are 100 percent um superwash merino i believe it's a four ply it is um and that's atlas base i don't really know the, the no base i name, don't actually think that I th it might not even have a base to be honest it doesn't have a base it's just 100 percent superwash four right. ply yep all right so that is flame on and winter steel winter steel Good Love job. it. Yeah, so that you, if you come to any of our trunk shows, you will be able to try this hat on and see for yourself. That looks so cool. What? That's that. All right. So my first... Oh, so now we're moving on to whips. Whoops. Yeah, I, I think two. that's all the finished objects we have. Maybe this won't be as long as I thought. It may not. I have two whips. How many do you have? One, two, three, kind of four. Three, kind of four. All right. So my first one that I'll talk about, you guys, you're going to be seeing this for the rest of the year, but... I figure I'll keep showing it when I make a decent amount of progress. This is the Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones. It is um, a thing. It's actually fingering weight blanket. I'm using leftovers or some scraps from previous projects. I've also added in some yarn that I've dyed some like some of the minis, I think one. And then I had some yarn that I pulled out from my Geo Gradient when I like had a restart because the pattern changed. So I threw some of that in here too. So here we are. I am currently I on love stripe the look of this so much. number four. So last time you guys saw it, I was here. So I finished this. This is a new mini. Um, this colorway will be in the shop soon. I just have to take pictures and come up with a name. So I went from here to here. And then we are currently on the fourth stripe, which you is made a lot of progress. here. This is new growth. Mm. which I'm using in my geo gradient. Yeah. And then I'm up to here. This entire color was knit at the house in Vermont. So I finished and started that there. And then this one I started there too. And it is pretty much done, I think. No, there's still some yarn left. But this, I mainly knit when we were out to lunch yesterday with Michelle. So these two will be memories of Vermont. I love that. So I am knitting it on the recommended needle size, which I believe is a 3.2, oh, I'm sorry, 2.75 millimeter. And I am following the, the instructions to pick up as you're knitting. I'm following Kay Littens, who is the crazy sock lady, yeah. her method, 
but I use K Jones method when I attach at the bottom, just because it gives it All a little keys. bit of a cleaner join there. Um, and I don't think you could go wrong with either one for attaching like this section, mm -hmm. but I do. I just love this. I think it's going to be really cozy. Me too. Look at how beautiful. Cam, when it's that's gonna done. That's so beautiful. And like I said, I will definitely be making more of these. And in the future, I'll go DK. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe the pattern has been updated to give instructions. It's either been updated to give instructions for DK or there's a DK version of it. Now. Oh, great. But basically, you could buy the pattern and probably just hold yarn double and use like a US 6 or 7 mm. and knit it up much quicker than I'm going to knit it. On a looser gauge, it'll be a, yeah. a looser And that is a living. Drapier fabric. And this lovely bag. I love this by bag. By Threads Company, our friend Jay. Yeah. Who graciously sent that to us. And it has a ton of yarn in there. I brought that with us on our trip and I put a different bag in it as well. I had my one page of my Thread and Maple binder with me and then the my Delicu case, mm -hmm. which has all my cords in it currently. Yeah, because we still need to get the cord page. The cord page. And yes. I want to get the notions page as well. I know. Okay. I'm glad you know these things. Good job. So that is whip one. Great. Um, I'm going to do a transition whip. It's a new term that we just came up with. We as in me and the people in my voices in my head. <clears throat> so um, I had, we had mentioned um, that we received yarn for our Rhinebeck sweaters this year, or some of part of the Rhinebeck sweater this year, one of our sweaters this year. And it's going to be the Sean's Gambier um, by Lindsay Enoe. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, but it is a super bulky jacket um, slash bulky sweater. It is color work flat. Um, however, I wanted to try... I've never done color work flat before. I know we talked about this in the last podcast. So... Um, talking to some friends, um, thought let's let me try because I've never steaked anything before either. Let me try to knit it in the round and then um, steak it. So that's what I did for with my swatch. I um, I knit the swatch in the round and um, and I did a felted steak, which is totally right up my alley and was so much fun to cut the yarn. So here is my swatch with my colors. The colors are going to look The colors great I think are going to look really, really great. I was a little bit concerned about the blue, mm -hmm. um, but seeing it all together, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Yes. So um, what I ended up doing was um, they ask you to do, for the swatch, um, that you they have you do that color section, this one color section here, um, which should be about a four inch square you know, around so that you can kind of measure your gauge properly. So in order to make it fit on the circular needles and be comfortable for me, I just added a second one on there. Plus it would give me an idea of what it would be like to carry this yarn, this blue yarn behind um, over a ton of these stitches just to see if it would change anything. Um, a friend of ours ended up doing, Kate ended up doing uh, Intarja, I believe. Yeah which I had never done as well. Um, that could be another option. I but don't, I just... Go ahead. It would be if you do it flat. I yes. don't know if you if you do it in the round, it wouldn't be. Yeah. So I will... Um, so anyway, here is here is my, uh, my thing. So I ended up getting row gauge, um, which I never do. So that was really interesting for me. However, stitch gauge, it calls for 11.5 stitches, 11 and a half stitches per four, over a four inch, uh, you know, block. I got 12 to 12 and a half stitches. So I'm about a stitch, stitch off. So, and then here are like my floats in the back, um, where I carried the yarn and you can feel it's a little, um, it's not, I'm sorry. You can't feel it's like, it's not tight at all i was very loose with with what i wanted to do and like carrying the yarn but the floats are you know pretty long yeah um there so i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to do all i know is that what i am going to do is i'm going to um knit another swatch flat uh just to see what that does and give me an idea 
of if it does change my gauge, if it's something that I feel like I'm going to be able to do and not get frustrated, you know, um, because I think the color work actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Here. There's a spot or two. It's The yarn is, um, there's some thick and thin strands with the yarn. Like some, it's very lightly plied too. So you have like, you have some different like thicker and like thinner. Yeah. So it is a single ply yarn. Yes. And this is Lamb's Pride. This is Lamb's Pride. Um, my colors are the blue, it's Lamp Pride Bulky, 85% wool, 15% mohair. Uh, it's 125 yards per skein. That is thick. I know. So the, the blue is Glacier Ice. The oatmeal color is oatmeal. <laughs> there. And then the brown, I believe is called Sable. It is. The brown is called Sable. So, you know, the cool thing about using yarn like this is, number one, it is affordable as well. Um, this yarn was probably... I, I th we got it, like, at, like on sale, basically. It was like eight, maybe seven something a skein of yarn, $8 a skein of yarn. So not going to be um, super pricey. So I'm not concerned about doing another swatch um, or having to save my yarn because I, um, I steak this. And I'll tell you about my steaks. I thought it was really interesting. So I did, I looked at a couple of videos to see, you know, how to steak, um, how to do a felted steak. So what, what you end up doing is you're, you're knitting this in the round. Um, and what I did for my steaking section, I wasn't sure exactly how many stitches to do, but they say usually between five and seven is a, is a good one. I think I did something like 14 just so that I would have some room to play around. Um, and then what I ended up doing was doing just one by one color work. Um, on alternating rows just to can just to bring all of the fibers you know together for when I was going to felt it so that everything felt it together and things weren't going to be kind of all over the place so what you do is you have you know you basically have your uh your knitting in the round um all completed and then over the your steak section what you you know this whole section here that i knew i was going to cut down the middle of i took my felting needles that i have from my needle felting kits um and a piece of the styrofoam felting mat and you just felt you just go go to town you just stick your needle in boom 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 boom, 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 boom all over the place um and then it turns fuzzy on the inside i don't know if you could be able to see that see the fuzz all this fuzz. I'm asking you. Do you? Oh, this I fuzz? thought you were. Are you listening to <laughs> yes. this? I didn't know you were waiting for. A response Am I reading for a response like, for somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was thinking. I literally thought in my head. I was like, he's asking. Like they're all going to reply. Well, thanks for being present. I really appreciate that so much. So, well, like, <laughs> all right. Anyway, Kevin, do you see the fuzz here? Look at that fuzz. Look at the it's fuzz. It's amazing. You must so have felted that. I did felt that. Thank you for asking. So that's how you know <laughs> that it's ready to cut when you have um, like an equal amount of fuzz. Anyway, so that was really fun. And all you do is you just you snip up the sides. <laughs> Everything's all felted together. You don't have to worry about anything at all. Um, so... What I what I did, and and if I decide to do this uh, in the round and steak it, I did a um, a uh, pearl um, stitch before starting this, so it'll curve on itself, um, and then I will decrease the amount of rows so that it'll be easier to to pearl here or to to fold over, and then the reason why you want to do this as well um, is because you if you wanted to pick up for a button band or anything like that. These pearl stitches make it so much easier to be able to see where you're going to be um, adding in that button band. And you would have to pick up for a button band. Yes. Right. So for this pattern. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to do that. So I wanted to try it. Um, it was a really great, it was a great experience. The knitting of this, I found uh, very easy to do. It was very meditative um, and it's a complete mirror image of itself. So what you do on this side, you just you do the opposite on this side. So that makes it, um, it just makes it easier for me to keep track of what I'm doing mid row. Even though you're only, you know, repeating this, like this whole section, it's not huge. Um, I did use stitch markers to, to, you know, point out where my, um, the sections were, but it was, e it's easy to figure out 
like real time if you're making a mistake or not. You know, sometimes mm. color work patterns are difficult to do that, but because they're mirrored, they're mirrors. Um, it was easier for me to do. Nice. Yeah. So, and I did this on the recommended needles, which is a US 11, which are humongous. Um, but I really enjoy. I really enjoyed it, and I got this done. I got this done pretty quick, in like a couple of hours, I think. Yeah. So that is. Um, that is that. I'm so excited about the colors. I think it's going to look really cool. Really? It's going to look Fletcher. Uh, okay, that's my my Go transition again. whip. Because I only have one other whip. Okay, um, my next one. Uh, let's do this one. Next by popular demand. And uh, I will say. Here we go. Here we go. I will say um, that my father has quite a few fans out there. Uh, so, Dad, if you're watching, you can thank the masses for um, lighting a fire under my dupa to um, get your sweater going again. So, yes, my dad's sweater was on hibernation for a while. Um, I put it on the back burner. I just, for some reason, wasn't feeling it. It was a little bit too much for me at the time. Um, but hearing a lot of your comments asking about my dad's sweater... I uh, decided last night, okay, you know, we had our vacation, hit that reset button. I think it's time. Let's get back to work. Okay. So here we are. Whew, Whew. Thank goodness. I know. So for those of you who are new, I've been knitting my dad's sweater since 1945. <laughs> it is a, um, it is called the Ivan by Veronique Avery. Veronique Avery. Um, let's see if I can find it here. It is a cardigan with like tulip sleeves and um, it's like an oversized, here's a picture, a really, like, really good picture of like the schematic. Um, so it's like an oversized um, cardigan with like three quarter length um, tulip, tulipy sleeves. There's a really cool sleeve detail in here um, that gets added in there. Like there are fashion increases and fashion decreases. It is a little bit like it's a higher skill level but i find that it's it's very easy to follow so here's the pattern from brooklyn tweed verney avery was the designer um my kevin the background is for those of you who know kevin um knit this sweater a few years ago now i think at this point i wonder when i did maybe last year oh really then that makes me feel a little bit better i feel like last year okay, okay. Uh, Maybe the year before, actually. I know. I think it's been a little bit. Um, my dad, who never asked for anything, said he loved the sweater, asked for the sweater. And I, in my infinite wisdom, said, you got it, dude. Okay. So um, just to recap, I had already knit the back panel here. So that's on hold. So that is on hold, waiting for assembly. I knit the left front panel already this is a lot of knitting y'all it um, is it's a ton of knitting. yeah so the left front panel <clears throat> that's all done and so i just need to do the right front panel and the sleeves and then i can go ahead and get this together yeah because there's no shawl collar on this it's already yeah, knit it's, into it yeah which makes things a lot easier right so excuse me i am using um knit picks twisted wool of the end wool no knit picks simply wool twisted the colorway is winkle and wanda <clears throat> which is like a it's a marled yarn uh with two of their colors which is why it's called twisted they have the simply wool in those solid colors as well i'm not sure which one is which uh which one is wanda which one is winkle wanda is the more beige like the gray beige and winkle I think it's the light color. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> but um, I had the tag, but I just kind of basically basically told you what it was. It's worsted weight yarn, um, non-superwash. I like the Simply Worsted. There's no, like, dyes in it or whatever. Uh, it's very, like, naturally done. So I cast this on last night, and I am working on the uh, the ribbing now. So Good I need job. about three and a half inches of ribbing, and then I can start um, start going with the body. But it's interesting, like Kevin was saying, you don't have a shawl collar. 
uh, along like along this, but the way that you're doing um, this side here, it's gonna fold in on itself and look really neat. Like yeah, and the, then you tack it down. Yeah, on the outside, so this becomes the no on the inside. That's what I meant on the inside. So this becomes the um, like gives it a little bit more structure. Yes, uh, on the inside. So I did start that. Thank you, everyone, for lighting a fire. But I think it's important sometimes to take breaks and have some hibernation. You have to but knit it, things that you want to knit yeah. on. Otherwise, you don't enjoy it. And sometimes that's being monogamous. Sometimes yeah. it's having 20 whips. So and sometimes I am it's casting on something happy new. to have this back on. It's worse in weight, so it'll go much quicker. And I think maybe I needed that little bit of a contrast because I'm knitting a fingering weight cardigan right now. It's growing it's growing, but it's growing a lot slower. Yeah. So this might feel uh, pretty nice now, like in contrast yeah. to that. And I believe that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Okay, so he's back. Ivan is back. You might as well go again because you still have two more. I do have two more. And I only have one more. Okay. Um, let me put this back so that I don't get confused. Oh, this is living in... The collaboration between Le Garçon and Heidenhammer. Good bag. Yeah, I don't know the name of it. The 10 or something? That might be a 10. Might be a 10. It's definitely a 10. Yeah, because the 8 is... I don't know. We it's... have an 8 and a 3, <clears throat> so I think that's a 10. Okay. You're a 10. Oh, shucks. <laughs> okay, and next up... This is the bag that I took to... Um, Vermont. I was gonna say, Rhinebeck. I was gonna say Rhinebeck too. How funny is that? Why would we say that? I don't know because we're going to Rhinebeck in a couple months. No, that's not why. Maybe because we're just meant to be and we have the same like, thought process. Anyway, like this is other. a what? We like each other. This is a Portland leather bag. Um, but they don't carry it. They anymore. don't carry it anymore. Went went. But uh, it was it. It's one of my absolute favorite bags. I'm gonna double check now that I've said it. But last time I went to their website, it was not an option. Okay. But you can keep going. Thank you. I just, I love how it just, how any, like, a successful bag right now for me is a bag that will stay open and then I can put to the side. True. Um, and then out of. Some of the smaller bags have been a little bit harder for me, like, when they collapse on themselves, especially um, with some of the, some of the, the yarn that I'm using and how it gets stuck on things. So let me show you this. This is a new cast on that I wanted to cast on something simple. I had finished my socks, so I really couldn't take those with me. Um, and I wanted to just to like, my card knitting, I like card knitting when I can knit in the round. Um, Cause then I, in my own head, I can stop whenever I want to. I have this aversion of stopping in the middle of a row on like project that you're knitting flat for some reason. So um, whatever. So I, I went upstairs and um, we have, as you, some of you know, we I put together some bags for myself of yarn that had intentional projects with them that have just been kind of piling up. So I wanted to start knitting through my stash. So I grabbed one of those bags. It had this yarn in it, had two skeins of this yarn. Um, Ulysses. It is 100% wool. <clears throat> the colorway is Lagoon. It's a sport weight yarn, 185 meters per 50 grams. And... De Rerum Natura, I think is the, the name of the company. Yeah, and I'm pretty I'm pretty confident we got this at Pick Up Every Stitch. We might have. So it's it's very, very lovely. I love the um the different colors that you have in there, and it'll be more evident when I show you the project. So <clears throat> I wanted to do a simple um stockinette hat. So I cast on the uh muscle bra again. And I am working my way on that. So here is it knit up. The I think the fabric that it's creating is super soft. I love the stitches in here. It's it's creating like a denser fabric, but it's still gonna be like very soft. Yeah, I think once you block it, it mm. will do the natural thing of soften up and become a little drapier. Yeah. So I got oh. I'm sorry, but you're, it's sport weight, too. This is sport weight, yeah. Okay. So I got, uh, and the pattern, I mean, the pattern really calls, you can use really use whatever, because it's based on whatever gauge you get as right. you knit. So you start with like a pinhole cast on or some sort of 
cast and I'll show you mine, which I, you know, I don't make a mistake. It's a design element that I added, you know, to this, like I do everything else. <clears throat> um, and then you measure your gauge and then based on your gauge and the size that you want, it has stitch counts and all of those things that you need to, uh, to create your project. So uh, my gauge, I think was eight and a half stitches per inch, somewhere around there. Um, and I'm making the medium size, the second size, third size, whatever the adult medium is. I was going to do the adult small um, just because these tend to also be a little bit big for me, but um, it looked too small. And I think I'm happy with the with this size. I think this is the perfect size for it. So I thought I would be a little fancier, I think, and do a um, uh, magic loop, magic circle crochet start. So for those of you who know crochet, um, or for those of you who don't know crochet, a magic circle is like a ma or a magic ring. Magic circle is basically you can crochet. You make a little ring. Um, you crochet into that ring, and when you pull the <clears throat> the tail, um, it cinches up that ring. So everything is nice and tight. You don't have that gap. Um, I thought it would be nice to start that way, and then do my starter. You know, and just add it onto the needles and uh, knit around, <clears throat> which was successful. It was successful, you can't really tell, right? However, I think somehow when I, I must have knit a few rows um, and then put it down and then when I picked it back up again, I must have flipped my work inside out uh, and then, you know, gone around again somehow because this is the, the top of the hat right now. It kind of looks like a flower. Yes. In a weird way. Absolutely. Um, but it's not, it's, it's, yeah, it's backwards. You, you did, you did a round of increases I did. and flipped. And I it flipped like. it. It kind of looks neat, but, um, that was not my intention. <laughs> so, uh, because this was supposed to be on the inside. So yeah. I did, I did, I flipped it. I flipped it inside out. Um, I mean, you could do a reverse stock knot one. I mean, I could, but again, the, so the, the whole idea, <laughs> the whole idea of the muscle bra is that it gets tucked in on itself. So what I'll do is I'll just tuck this side up, you know, yeah, into that one. Easy fix. Easy fix. But, um, I still have, you know, quite a while to go. It's going to be one of those just like nice when I'm ready for something, stocking it in the round, super easy. You can just go on autopilot. Don't even have to look. Cause all the increases and stuff are done. But I really, I really like. It's a nice yarn. Yeah, I I'm, have two skeins too. I'm super excited about this yarn. Right here. In the lighting, it's hard. It's not really picking it up, but there's definitely like some yellow undertone in here. Yeah, where the? I'm really. Sh did we get this at pickup? I'm not sure. Where I we feel got like this we from. did. I don't yeah, know. this looks like they're price tags. Okay. Maybe. I think so. Okay. So um, that's that. I'm just gonna take my time with this. I may, I may not do any work on this. Um, I may do a lot of work on this. So it may pop in and out of our podcast intermittently. Very nice. My last whip is living in my Magner. Bag That's a that I got one. at Brooklyn General. Mm. This is my Geo Gradient. Oh, can I interrupt for one second? Yeah. I'm so sorry. For those of you who may be asking, the pattern um, calls for... Oh, shoot. I, I'm doing the same needles that the pattern calls for. So it's... Uh, even though it's sport weight, I'm still using... I believe it's 3.25 millimeter needles. These are my fixed, uh, fixed Addies. And I find that the fixed Addies are definitely my go-to for hat knitting. I prefer them over uh, the Chowgu Interchangeable. I think they're so much smoother. They are very smooth. Especially when you're going in the round. But then the only reason I don't prefer them is then I, when I move to Magic Loop, then I have to get the Chowgu anyways. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I just go Chowgu. Okay. Um, so I am... My next and only other whip is my Geo Gradient... Shawl by Stephen West, I and I'm so still working on this section. I will actually finish it today, this one wing. Um, so 
it's a lot of number one ends, as you can see. And there's no way to carry those up? No, because you, I, no. Okay. Because it's a four color repeat, right? Yeah. So carrying this white up to this white, that's 32 rows. Oof. And you wouldn't want to do that. And you would have no. to do that with every color. Yeah. Um, so I have about 12 rows left of this side. And then I have to pick up these stitches and do the same thing on this side. Okay. So my plan is to finish this side today and then start the other side nice i do need i, I really think that your colors make this shawl like it's thank you gorgeous. speaking of things this is all yarn that i dyed mm. this is on the bfl base the 7525 so this is ghost this is wedding mints this is new growth and this is shady pines and I believe everything except maybe new growth is on the website in the BFL, 7525 BFL. So I am knitting this on the recommended needle. I believe it's a US, yeah, it's a US 4, 3.5 millimeter. Um, and it is, it's nice to work on something that requires my attention. Yeah. You know, that I have to look at this pattern's pretty intuitive i have had to go back and like rip out a row here or there because i've got my slip stitches wrong mm. but and i did mention before i felt like my yarn was a little bit tighter on the stitches on when i was slipping them in the front of the work when i'm working on the right side as opposed to the when i'm slipping them on the back of the work when I'm knitting on the wrong side. But I do feel like there's enough give. I've been, you know, slowly just making sure I can stretch this out. So I don't think I'll have an good. issue pinning yeah. it and getting the look that I want. Um I think I was more concerned. Yeah, no, I think I've yeah, I do. think I'll be fine with it. Um I'm not looking forward to weaving in all those ends, but you know, it is what it is. That's part of knitting. That's right. That's the finishing aspect of yeah. things, right? So that would be a day's worth of knitting, just weaving in the ends, I feel like, when I'm done. I have been going in periodically and just, you know, doing two or three and snipping them. But that's all that I've worked on. I actually, there were several days last week where I just didn't knit. You also weren't feeling too well last week. I wasn't feeling too well. There was a lot of basketball. Congratulations to UConn. Woo, woo. Um, who won the national championship for the second year in a row. So, yeah, there was a lot of basketball. So I... That wasn't something I could knit while I was watching basketball. Right. So that kind of took a back burner. Yeah. And that is my knits. Okay. I still have one left, and it is that fingering weight cardigan that I was just telling you all about. It is um, Wild Horses. What bag's this? This is the same bag that I just showed. Oh, okay. I was going to say... I, I had both of my projects in right, here. That. It's such a big bag that like I was, I'm able to have... Um, both of my projects. And I did check. They do not have this bag. Sorry. It's so good. Um, all right. The Wild Horses um, by Ann Hansen. Oops. <clears throat> I, I mean, I've been showing this, but you can make this uh, a cardigan version or a pullover or a jumpa. Um, it is a fingering weight cardigan. There, it's very size inclusive. It goes from thirty six to sixty eight. I feel like um, there's a there's always a good. bunch of sizes in her patterns. Yeah, um, her patterns are written very very well. I uh, we chose this. I chose this pattern at Rhinebeck. This is hopefully going to be another one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. I thought it'd be really nice to have a fingering weight cardigan just for my everyday life in general. Um, I actually can show this stuff as well. So um, here's what I have so far. I did make some progress, but again, it's slow going. Um, the yarn is Bare Naked Wools by Knit Spot. It's in their Better Breakfast fingering. It is 55% merino, 35% dehaired alpaca, and 10% nylon. It is uber soft. Um, it's 450 yards per 15, 115 grams. Um, I got gauge for my sweater. 
I'm knitting the third size, I believe. One, two, three. Run row. The third size, the 44 inch um, chest. Right, because there was a debate about that. There and was. Then it came recommended that you should do the 44 inch chest. Yeah, I didn't want anything like super um, baggy for this because I I likely will not be buttoning it to wear it. Like I'll wear it open. Yeah. Um, because I like that look anyway. Anyway, um, so there you have it. Here's where I, ha I am so far. Um, you made a good bit of progress. I think so on too. That. So I was at the stitch marker here. There. Yep. And I've knit. You know, I've knit all of that. Yeah, um, you've made a, a really good amount yeah. of progress. But I'm sure you can see, like, it is going to be so drapey and, like, incredibly soft. Um, this is, you know, the the swatch after watching, washing it. Um, well, I wish I can show you <laughs> what it is, but I don't know where I put it. Sometimes I put them in these pockets. I do. So the... Um, Here's my swatch. And the stitches really just fall into place. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Um, and it, it just gonna it just looks so nice. And it's it's so so much Did you um, want to know that time if I could see? Softer. Did you could you see? Yeah. Good. I just want to check. I want to make sure that I'm being um, that I'm acknowledging my feelings. Your... <laughs> Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I do. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually getting good, uh, good, hmm. Your, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I have no idea. I have this much yarn left over and I did a lot of this already. So I'm getting, you know, what's the, what am I trying to say? I think I I'm going to have some good yardage <laughs> left over. I don't know. I'm, I'm making good. Here's what I have so far. <laughs> It's um anyway, it's it's super soft. There's a lot of yardage in this. There is. So he's made a lot of progress. With not a lot of yarn. <laughs> and he's still only working on the first skein. Yeah, that's a, that's what I'm I'm only working on the first skein so far. That's what I'm here um for. Okay. It's to So like maybe I can finish the whole back on one skein, no. wouldn't you think? No. That would be great. No. Okay, so um I definitely need to um give a huge 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 thank you um to our friends over at pick up every stitch who picked out some buttons and other accoutrements um to be added to my sweater i was saying how sorry that's really loud I was saying how I wanted some like dark brown buttons. How great is that going to be on here? It's going to look like a smoking jacket. Right? I kind of want that look. I should probably take up smoking a pipe. Um, in addition to all of these buttons, now this is, I'm not sure the brand or where they came from, um, but pick up every stitch. Also sent some pa elbow patches if i was interested in adding those to the sweater in the same color these are absolutely beautiful um and some pockets what can you imagine this is exactly what i was looking for for um for like this sweater i want it to be like a luxurious like sweater so these Probably. are from pearl and hank yeah, this is all Pearl and Hank. So I don't know. The buttons maybe as well. Okay, maybe. Um, but like the pattern doesn't call for like pockets or elbow pads, but I, I think like, come on. I'm just hoping that they're not going to be too heavy for the fabric. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Right? Um, but the colors are spot on. I think everything's going to be nice. And then they also included some like handmade tags by the same company. Oh, the different company. The folded... No. No, this is yeah, by same Pearl. company. So your that one folds over, so it yes. would be great for like either the hem of a sweater yep. or the brim of a hat. Mm -hmm. And then this is one that sewed inside. Yeah, no, this could be sewed outside, mm -hmm. but it's just it doesn't okay. fold over. I guess. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was the most incredible 
gift I could have gotten. This is exactly what I'm going for. I think this is going to be a tip-top luxurious sweater experience. Listen, I spent... Good job. And the the yarn is not inexpensive. Uh, inexpensive, right? So, like, this is kind of where I'm going with, like, I want this to be... A, like, like, I hope it turns out as, like, my vision does, but I, I really want it to be that, that like, luxurious piece of... Um, so... Can I ask if there was a design element that you added inadvertently? Would you remove that design element to? I would. I would rip maintain. out the entire thing. Okay, to I, maintain the yeah. integrity of the pattern. Yes. Okay. Good. I just I wondered. I say that now. I, but you do. We'll see how it goes. But I really like this is one that I want to take my time with. I want to be. I want to be spot on with this. This is also going to be my first pieced. Well, depends if I get the Ivan done first. It'll either one of those will be my first piece. Piece. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So that's all of our FOs and whips. I'm gonna go through some yarn. I don't know if I showed this last time, but I did get some yarn added to the shop last week, prior to me not feeling a hundred percent. So I dyed a batch of roasted pumpkin on a hundred percent superwash merino four ply. Gorgeous. Fingering weight. I also dyed up Second Wedding, which is a nice little, like, purple. Then, I showed this before, but it's on the site. This is this Old one. Fashioned Teddy, it's which so these good. two would look beautiful together. Really very would. autumnal. Then, this I haven't dyed in a while, just because it's, I feel like it's a lot. But I love this color. I forget how much I really like this. This is Mystique. Mystique. It's almost got a glow to it. This is Inkblot, which is a navy with just like this... Halo of purple. Yeah, a little bit of a purple undertone to it. This is new. I needed to dye something, and I didn't feel like calculating one of my recipes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's just do something. Let's mix some colors together. And I did. And this is called Sahara mm -hmm. Sands. It's so good. So what was very interesting about this is as it was drying, I thought it looked too similar to Graham Cracker. And like them next to each other, mm. it was they looked incredibly close, and they are. Graham Cracker is a lot lighter. This is brown, more brown, and yeah. this is more like yellow. Yep. But, like, I feel like these three. Oh, that's great! I even feel like you could use that with this. Hundred percent. That would be actually those two together. Mm -hmm. What about these two? I like those two together. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think that could actually go with a lot. Like, this one's even fun, too. Those two? I I personally don't know about those two or these two. But these two, yes. These two, yes. These three, yes. Those three should be... You should these buy two, all three of those together. Yes. Yeah. Really nice. So, yeah, so definitely I definitely have new colors... Um, coming too i know i have two new grays i have a red another orange coming and i don't know what else so that is that next up is our sections known as owl post which means it's some things that maybe y'all had sent us and some breaking the bank which means some things that we purchased yes and so why don't we start with owl post okay. and ray Got a nice, yeah. Why don't we start with that? Ray got a nice um, gift. I'm a little bit nervous about opening this. So this was in our post, our PO box. It says for Ray, but only open on the podcast. And this arrived the day that we left for Vermont. Yeah. So, so you know what I was gonna say? Um, Cause it's gonna make a lot of noise why don't you get a pair of scissors oh wait i have a pair right here you think yeah i have my in case we haven't shown this in a while one of my favorite notions this is the bits and bobs from always queenie belief it's already opened okay well it, that worked out well because my scissors aren't in there oh you're good it's almost open but i brought that to uh vermont with us all right what is it? Ooh. Wait a minute. What the heck is it? Is it this? Wait a minute. 
Oh my god. Are you kidding? No. Wait, are you kidding? Did you make this for me? I did not. Somebody did. I know. I'm not talking to you. I, <laughs> I, don't, know. I'm talking to, I don't know who you talk I'm to talking anymore. talking to Sarah. Is this from Sarah? Yes. This is from Max. Well, the pattern. This is the bumpy cardigan. The bumpy cardigan. Are you kidding? Oh my god. Wow, thank you. You did so good. Nobody's ever made me a sweater before. <laughs> I know. You shouldn't have had me open this on the podcast because now I'm going to cry and everything. And it's too it's Why do you s- try it on? Okay. I can't I can't get out. I know. The, if you all saw this room on a podcast day, it, I mean, it's not great on a non-podcast day, but on a podcast day, this room is a, a nightmare. Oh, that's going to be cozy. It feels cozy. You um you would have enjoyed it this Maybe past it? No, this past week. What? Well, oh, I would have enjoyed wearing it. Wearing it. This I think week. we're having some um communication issues. Communication issues. Wow, it looks great. Thank you. Oh my god, it, yours looks really cozy. It's super cozy. Woo-hoo. It's such a I, while we I have were no idea what the yarn is or anything like that. Do you? No. So I brought my version with us on our trip, and I wore it one day. It was actually really nice. So let's... There's no note or anything in here. Let me see. That's okay. We'll, we'll talk about it after. Let's, let's Let me see if I out. have an email. That was really nice. Thank um, you so much. Hold on. So I brought mine, and I've actually thought I think I might make another one without the bumps i may just do a straight up cardigan like some dk weight yarn do it no bumps no i cords because it is just such a cozy pattern Mm -hmm. like a cozy fit um so i may do another one of those nice i I don't see an email okay i could well well, i will reach out to you thank you very much yeah but so sarah had reached out to me after you had asked me to knit you one and i said no i know you did and she was very generous and offered and said she'd love to knit you one so we talked about sizes and colors wow um she knit that up for you the colors are spot on they're Uh, they're so great that's your jam green blue and some gray totally 100 percent. i'm in it just your jam in it to win it so that was a very nice gift i'm yeah thank you so much what else um, all right, so we also have do, 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 do. Um, that we don't have to do all that. I no, think. no. Okay, no. All right, great. I think that might be all of our. No, there's one other thing on the in the box. This one? Nope. The two skeins. Oh. Yes. So. Okay. We. Um, we've shown... We're so lucky I know, to have and, friends that we have. And we have shown his yarn before. This is yarn from Red Stag Fiber. This yes. is Josh, um, which I'm actually really excited about. Hey, you can go ahead and scan that QR code if you're interested. We're going to hopefully get to meet him because I know that he had posted... Keeping our fingers crossed. That... Hold on. I want to... Let's make sure I'm not speaking out of turn. Okay, I'm not. So... Josh is going to be vending at Flock Fiber Festival in August, which we are going to go to. Did we tell you all we're going to Flock Fiber Festival? I think we did. So we're going to go to Flock. We have a bunch of friends on the West Coast, so we get to see a bunch of them. And then I've been excited to see vendors who have been saying that they're going. So Red Stack Fiber mm-hmm. will be there. Um, he has recently released a new yarn base, and he's asked if we'd be... Or if we would like to give it a try. And he yes. sent some over and we can now speak of it because he had his launch party at Modern Skein in Texas. So this is his new base and these are two colors. It is his Manor collection, which is a Paulworth and Masham blend. So it's 75% Paulworth, 25% Masham. It is non-superwash. This colorway is called French Waistcoat. It's a beautiful blue-gray. 
And this is antique leather. Which is just one of my favorite colors of his ever. What? I have a stain somewhere. In... But look how beautiful they go together. It is a sport weight base. Yeah. So, um, de- I mean, I would certainly go check it out. Here's, I. what's this one? I know. Oh, this so, is undyed. And you can see it has a very, like, gray undertone to yes. it. I was just going to say, some of my favorite things about the yarn is the tonality. Um, and then you can definitely tell like that it's got some of the, the darker undertones to it. I love the the spin on it, like how round. Um, it's super. This looks plump and bouncy. Yeah, it's um, it's very soft, but you can tell that it's uh, like a non superwash yarn, but it's definitely on the softer side. I'm not sure what the micron count is on this. I think his labels are great. I think this is, you know, this is really. This is a new label too, beautiful. because it is the Manor Collection, so it's yeah. specific for this. It's it's really it feels sophisticated. You um, know, here is like you have some tonality to that. I think it's gonna. I think this is gonna look so great. There's another color called Mar M A R. So definitely check out Josh's website. Yeah, Red Stag Fiber. Um, and Josh, thank you for sending this to us. Yeah, and I don't know what it's going to be. See you in August because I kind of think that they should be something together. Yeah, we just need to find a sport weight yeah. pattern. I actually don't know of many sport weight patterns. Uh, sport weight is definitely. I'm seeing more yarns in a sport weight, so we have to find some patterns for that. Wow. And then I think that's everything for owl post, correct? Owl post, yes. All right. So now we're going to get into the section of... Breaking the... Ba- I have break- to put my other sweatshirt on. This is getting a little bit warm. I know. It is quite warm yeah. here today. Um, breaking the bank. Oh, so we're, I just won't put the back. We'll start with our purchases from Harrisville because that's the first uh, thing. Actually, can we start with... Um, I ended up getting uh, something non-yarn related, but as part of one of my clubs... Um, that came before oh, we yeah, get into yeah, our yeah. trip. This was waiting for us when we got home. Um, so for those of you who follow me or know that I do really enjoy uh, needle felting, and I just haven't been able to, I haven't been doing it in a little bit, um, but I will. I've got a ton of these kits, and I love Going Gnome. They're one of my favorite companies. So each year they do a uh, mystery kit club. And you know how much I love mystery kits. And this um, this one was under the sea themed, which was great. Um, so I have uh, a couple of, I'm not sure, they're probably in the back, in the back there. but um, So it came to an end. I have, so in addition, this is the kit, Mystery Kit Club 2023. Um if you haven't received it yet, I'm going to show it still because I think they're they're really great. So just just giving you a little spoiler warning. So um, this one is the puffer fish. Cute. How cute is that? And then with their kits, um, with their kits, they usually include at the very end a bonus, a little bonus kit. Last year was like the endangered species kind of thing, and we got I got a little gnome. Um, so this bonus is the starfish, which I think is also really, really cool. So that came um, very excited. I want to, I really want to get back to doing this. It's just very difficult to find the time with like school and mm. all that Maybe stuff. sometimes just take a break from the knitting. But then and, enjoy the knitting. And then just do this. I know, so I just have to, I need to pick out a project. You know what worked out well for me is when I had it set up already, like on the dining room table, and I could just grab it, do a little bit, and yeah. put it back. I just, somebody's taken over the dining room. So I There's just, none of my stuff on the dining room. It's also that we- Easter, we cleaned up. We do have a bird put, that flies around and jumps on things, so yeah, that's also a little bit Keeping needles different. out will probably not be, and those are sharp Correct. needles. Good point. Yeah. All right, so that- Is one break in the bank. That's one break in the bank. Next up is next up are our, is our tr- our trip our purchases from our trip. So yeah. again, the first place we stopped at was Harrisville Designs in Harrisville, New York. Um, do you have that? I do. I have bag? that over here. Okay. So we bought some patterns. Um, that was yours. Yeah. This was mine. This is both of ours, I think. Yeah. 
this is mine. All right, so first up is we both bought this pattern. This is the Sheep Scott Mitts. So fingerless mitts with a little texture. Um, it is made using their Harrisville Designs Sheer Merino Dorset DK weight. So the same base that Ray that wants, I wants to use yeah. in Aaron for that sweater. Right. This is the same base, but in DK. So it is 100% un undyed American wool. And, and this is the picture of the mitts. Oh, shoot. On the back here. I'm trying not to give away the pattern. Yeah, so just, right? you know, a Simple. nice basic one. So I picked up a skein of yarn to make those. And this is a 50 gram skein for, and it's $8.50. Which is a really good price. You get a 196 yards for 50 grams. Yeah. And this is um, called buttermilk. I th Honestly, it feels really nice. Um so I ended up getting two skeins as well because I wanted to make those mitts and one skein is enough to do the mitts and I wanted to make this hat as well just so I can try it because if I'm really committing to making that cabled sweater, I wanted to see how the cables might look um, with that yarn. So this is the car hat, C-A-R-R. -R. Uh, it's a nice cabled hat. Looks pretty simple. You can do it as a beanie or a watch cap. Um, and then they say, so this yarn, the yarn for this, the recommended yarn, I think for this was their nightshades day, daylights in DK, but I wanted to try this to see how it would hold up and, uh, you know, as cables being a two ply and stuff. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So I'll have that cabled hat and those mitts. I think would look really, really cool. Right. Yes. Great. All right. So the next pattern I picked up is called the Montaigne hat. Yeah. This has two versions. There's like a, oh, this doesn't show. All right. So you can see here, it has your classic beanie and then a, or two different styles of decreases. So this is a worsted weight hat. This is uh, again for Harrisville Designs. It's written by Whitney Hay Hayward and this is the recommended yarn was the Harrisville Highland worsted weight yarn. It's 100% virgin wool, 200 yards and 100 grams. So I picked up the color charcoal. That's really nice. To give this hat a knit. And then the last purchase is I saw this pattern and I actually saw a sample of yeah. this in the store. This is called the wild. It is a cabled sweater. This is knit using daylight, no nightshades. It's on um, the back. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Nightshades or daylights. You can use either one of those. I went with nightshades. I bought a sweater's quantity of nightshades in the colorway dashboard. So it is a very black yarn, but there is it's a blue. It's blue. Yeah. It's very, um, very dark. It's, you can't see it on there. I don't, oh, you may see Yeah, there see you go. It. There's a little bit of a, There's yeah. some blue flecks in it. And what was really nice about seeing this in person is that they had some color cards. Yeah. So they had all of the nightshades on yes. the color card. And you can see what the almost secondary color it's in like the skin is. like a hue almost, like how it's, yeah. So I picked up enough to do, I have to figure out the size. The size is there's a large jump in, in the sizes, like four to five inches so my chest is like about a 42 so this is meant to be worn with three to six inches of positive ease so i feel mm. like i'm gonna have to knit the 43 49 and three quarter inch chest knowing that i'm a tight knitter and it's going to be smaller on the recommended needles yeah it's kind of a gamble though that's a big jump it is but i feel like that's how i'm going to 
have to go. Although the model in here is wearing it with three inches of positive ease. Yeah. So maybe I Although, just... Although, like should, this says... I'll have to swatch, obviously. Yeah, it says to be worn with three to six inches of positive ease, though it can be worn with up to eight inches of positive ease. Right. It says. So, so. I have to figure that out, but yeah. I got seven skeins of this. And then... This dude's got the most perfect lips. Look at that. <laughs> that has to be photoshopped. And then we just got... Each of us picked up a little Harrisville Designs enamel pen. Yeah. So if you're ever in the area, highly recommend. I thought it was a lovely store. They had cones for knitting or crocheting. They also had cones for weaving. They had a bunch of weaving stuff. Um, like I said, some fi loose fiber that you can put together yeah. and buy. I think it was, I want to say it was like $20 for half a pound or something like that. It was really neat. It was a very, obviously, very old mill, very old building. Yeah. Uh, cute town. Certainly recommend the area. That was really nice. And then next on our trip, we went to Green Mountain Spinnery. Yes, we did. Um, it's a bag. Cute. Yeah, so uh, Green Mountain Spinnery is a co-op. It is yes. a, um, a small mill in Vermont. And oh, fun! I forgot about this one. Me too. I'm not quite sure. Oh, sorry. Did I hit the thing? I don't know actually. So we got little needle gauges. Some Green Mountain Spinnery needle gauges. Yeah. It's nice to get something with the name cute. on it. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Do you know? You picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I picked up two different blends of yarn. The first one is a fingering weight yarn. It is 100% fine wool. It's a two-ply fingering. All fibers grown in the U.S. It's spun there in Vermont. This is their Lana fingering in the colorway Bahia. And I just thought this was a really nice gray-blue. Yeah. I love all the like Tweety bits in it. So this I might do a muscle burr out of. I think it would That's be a, a really idea. nice muscle burr. Yeah. A nice warm one for the winter. Mm-hmm. And then next up, I bought two skeins of this. This is a worsted weight. It's a two ply. It is a hundred and forty yards or one hundred and twenty eight meters, and I believe it's fifty grams. Yeah, I think they are right. So this is the colorway chestnut, and this is their weekend wool base. Chestnut. So I got two thing. skeins of this. It's a beautiful deep maroon, mm -hmm. and again, Tweety bits in it, which I love. I got the same base, the weekend wool, but I got it in this gorgeous color. Uh, it's called Deep Lake. So I think this is going to be um, a cabled hat. Cool Haas, didn't you say? Cool Haas. Yeah, I'm going to do Cool Haas with this. I think it'll look really, really neat. And oh my goodness, like like we said when we went into the store, 100% like you feel like you're walking in the middle of um, a farm. A farm. And then we put the bags in the car, and when we got into back into the car from wherever, um, or went to unpack, whatever the case is, you we got like oh kept even getting, just driving yeah, kept getting the whiffs of the yarn. I love that that woolly woolly smell. So this should be fun. It's a four ply, I think, right? Is that two what ply? Saying? Oh, it's two ply. Yep, two oh, ply works. Two ply. Yeah, it's nice. And but then, like Kevin said, it's nice that it's uh like you know co op and like. The workers are the owners, which are really cool. Um, all right, and then we went to Six Loose Ladies in Chester, Vermont. There's their little logo. So this was a cute shop too, and mm -hmm. what was really nice is, I want to say the shop's almost broken up into two sec two sections. When you first walk in, prior to getting to the past the counter, all of that seemed a very local yarns and local dyers some local mills so i really focused and made purchases from that section of the store i believe this one's mine right um, i think so because we each got one of these i just don't remember color yeah i did very well you did a lot okay so first up i did buy some fiber this is dirty girl yarns and this is four ounce braid and it is um, Rainbow Lay. 
I love so, it. So, you it's know, really these pretty. colors are all in my blue-gray wheelhouse. So I got this. I don't think I've spun Rambula because I've barely spun anything. But I thought that was pretty. So I picked that up. And then this is a um, hand-dyed in Vermont. This is Drunk Yarns for Knitters Who Drink. And this is the colorway Australian Shepherd. And it is... Oh, it's a DK, Willow DK base, 100% Superwash Merino. I'm actually a little confused. So it's Round Mountain Fibers is the company. Oh, thank you. You're Round welcome. Mountain Fibers. Because I got it from the same company. But why do does it say Drunk Yarn on the back? Um, Because the inspiration that they get. Inspired um, by nature, not drinks. Yeah. I don't know. Well, this one is different. Mine is different, but it's the same company. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. Unless it's labeled wrong. Actually, when I was l seeing this, I thought, for whatever reason, it kind of reminded me of a monarch. Mm -hmm. I just love the colors of this. What's the colorway name? Australian Shepherd. Oh. Mm. They're beautiful dogs. Oh, yeah. Dogs. Australian Shepherd. Yeah, they're beautiful dogs. So, yeah, I just love this. I thought it was really pretty. And then my last one is... Well, can I show my colorway? Because I got the same Oh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Right? So my colorway is bug-eyed... March fly, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very pretty. See, that was easy. Do you like me? No, I don't. <laughs> That's sad. Um, and it is a, what were you going to say? Sourced in Australia, New Zealand, spun in Canada, hand dyed in Vermont. Okay. Using greener shades dye, certified for organic processing and free of heavy metals. Oh, does mine say the same? It should. Yeah. We really just don't know what we're talking about. We just see something pretty and like, oh, okay. There, I thought there this had a bunch of beautiful colors. Me it too. was a little it difficult. Is. I had a different skein in my hand, and then I went back to this one. Yeah. And then the last thing I bought was another. I want to say this is worsted weight. There was like a, a little card on the shelf that described the plies and the gauge and all that stuff. So this is from Mount Escutney View Farm. It just says wool yarn, and this is called Blue Lock. It's four ounces for, I'm sorry, 210 yards. And it was super reasonably priced. This game was less than $10. Mm -hmm. So again, another local yarn tweety bits nice blue and there's like flecks of purple in here and some lighter shades of blue yeah this is aqua heather same place and mine does say worsted weight oh, okay on it so it likely mine should is be. probably the same but the fun thing is that the tag is actually their business card yeah that they just post you know poked a hole in um so they're in perkinsville vermont um, they've got their phone number and email address and everything there. I don't see a website though, but we'll see if we can find their website and have it linked down below. But that was, that's the fun thing about going to these local yarn stores is that you find local yarn that you really can't get maybe like in mass, right? Yeah. Or en mass, whatever. Um, and that was definitely the color you picked. Cause remember you wanted a baby blue, I a light baby, baby blue. blue. So that's correct. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that I believe is all of our purchases. Is all, yeah, that's all of our purchases. It's actually not too bad. No, we did good. It was nice to get a little, you know, we tried to get some of those local. Everything was local. Yeah. That we bought. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that we'll talk about is what we've been reading and watching. Great. I'm so hungry. I ate before we came up. I had oatmeal. Good for you. Um, so we'll go through watching pretty quickly because there's a bunch of it. So we have finished the series Downton Abbey. Yes. Loved. Fantastic. Right. Would watch it again. 100%. For the third time. Made me feel all the feels. Yes. Uh, we also watched the two Downton Abbey, Abbey movies. So mm -hmm. Downton Abbey the movie and then Downton Abbey A New A new Era. Yeah. Loved and recently heard that a third and final movie will be coming out. The end of A New Era was sad. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I agree. Yeah. That yeah. broke my uh, heart. Yeah, me too. Um, 
<clears throat> and then we also watched a new show on Netflix called Three Body Problem. It just came out only one season. I want to say like somewhere between six to eight episodes. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like a what's going on. Yeah. The first couple. And then the final couple. The last one was like, oh, it's over? Like, what happened? Right. Or what's going to happen? I still happen? feel like I don't necessarily understand. Like, I understand what's happening, but I don't understand, like, what the... Basically, what happened is... Well, assign... don't give it away, because people watch it, like... Yeah, because you don't even you, know in the I first... I think part of that is trying to, like, understand what's going on. It's a sci-fi show. We'll yeah. say it's definitely sci-fi. Uh, but I thought it was good. I thought it, I just thought took it was a good while too. to figure out. Yeah, we'll definitely watch the next season. Oh, for sure. Because I, I definitely want to know what's going on. Yes. Oh, Time to stand watch up. Watch saying stand up. You guys have been sitting too long. And then the next thing, we just started watching and we finished season one last night. Mm-hmm. And we just started season two is it is a show on Apple TV Plus. So it is their subscription based platform of apple tv and it is called slow horses yeah which i saw is based on a book it is a spy show but like the spies are the bottom of the barrel like they effed up in their real job and like mi5 and they got kicked out and they got sent to this we don't need you but we're just going to send you here so you could do menial work and tasks and you're not involved with us really it, I th- enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I did too. I thought it was. I thought it was good too. The acting is really good. Yes. Um, like the underlying themes, um, or storylines or whatever, I thought was was really good. The in the first season. Yeah, and it's, it's just. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just say it's just interesting. It's like it's sometimes hard to follow for me, um, because like there's a lot of underhandedness i think going on like between like mi5 and like what's Mm -hmm. going on here so and there's also like a lot of things that aren't told to you right away like for the background of some of these characters so it seems a little choppy at times like with character like character interactions um so i yeah it's but it's very i think it's very entertaining i think it's it's very yeah i think it's a good show Mm -hmm. um and that's really all we've watched right Oh no! The only other thing we've watched like two episodes of is X Men ninety seven. Oh yeah, on Disney Plus. Yeah, that is. So growing up, there was an X Men cartoon. We both enjoyed it. This cartoon is a new release, and it takes place after the events of that. Right. So that's why it's called X Men ninety seven. Right. Right. Uh, and it's been enjoyable. The two episodes that we watched, we definitely yeah. Should it brings watch back some, some more. like some memories. Yeah. You know, I will say some of the voices are weird to me though. I agree. Some of the lang, and it's probably now because it's there, different, but it it mirrors what it was then. The like, like the word choices and yes, like, yeah, the vernacular. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna look something up and I don't know what. I don't know. Um. So yeah, we. Oh, w- that was kind of our watching, and then there was a lot of basketball. Kevin was up late uh, a couple of nights watching. Not a couple, um, like every night. Games, I know. Um. But go UConn, they did great. The men did great. The women did great too. They got to the final four. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's really what we've been watching, reading. I'll keep it very simple. I'm still reading and listening to the same things that I, I was listening to. I am, or, and reading, I'm almost done, um, with my audio book. What's it called? Under, uh, Outlander. Outlander. Almost done with that one. It's still meh for me. Um, so you're not going to, as of right now, I won't be continuing the series. No, I, I won't be continuing the series. I'll find something else to listen to. It was okay. Uh, I'm almost done. I think I'm like 40 minutes left. And then I'm reading the third book in the House of Glass series, which I think this is actually really good. I remember mentioning in the last podcast that I was a little bit um, not – I wasn't super sold on the jumping back and forth between storylines. And then they added a fourth one in there. So you're following four different groups of people. So, like, you get to a good part, and then they move on to somebody else. You know what I mean? And you're just like, oh, I just want to find out what's happening. Like, can't we bring everybody together? I find, for me and my my focus, it gets a little too choppy. 
uh, and things start blending into each other. Okay. But now, um, now they're spending a longer period of time on each section, and some of these some of these groups are starting to merge back together again. So it's making things a little bit easier. Um, so I th- it basically is like what's each same t- like time frame, but what each group is doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm anticipating everything's going to kind of come to a head, right? You know, at one big battle or whatever the case is, and then everything's going to kind of like make more sense. It sounds like Game of Thrones, where like it, it it's very much you know like where that. it's like you had the Starks here in the north, you had somebody over at the wall, you had yes. somebody down here, yeah. somebody there, and then by the end of the season, they're all right here yeah. type of thing. However, like watching it is a completely different experience for me than just like reading it. Well, that was my struggle. Like I attempted to read the first book of Game of Thrones and each chapter was a different character. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, I don't know how I'm going to like this jumping and knowing how many characters are in that show. I didn't want to jump through 15 different chapters and Mm -hmm. be each one from the perspective of 15 different characters type of thing. Um, I'll probably go back and read it one day, but that's where I was at at that time. That's all I have to say. Okay. I'm only reading one thing and have only read one thing over the last two weeks. And that is The Well of Ascension, book two of the Mistborn series Mm. by Brandon Sanderson, which I now know is a seven book series and not a three book. But I think originally it was only a trilogy. Okay. So whatevs. Um, I'm enjoying it. Again, it's just a very long read. There's a lot of details and it's. I want to say this one's a little bit slower than the first book, Mistborn, but there are moments that you get to and you're like, oh, good. Like, this is interesting. So I want to see how this storyline plays out. Um, and the ca- interestingly enough, a lot of these characters, not a lot of the characters, but there were characters who were in the first book and have been separated from the main group. And now they're all starting to come back together. So, so it's getting a, you know, more interesting again, Yeah, but it's just a very slow paced book at this point. And I'm, I want to say I'm about 40% in, and I still have like a good 10 to 12 hours left in the book of reading. That's a lot. And I'm reading on the Kindle, not doing any audio listening. But other than that, that's all I've really read. Not really. That's all I have read. So, with that being said, we're actually under. I know. I thought we we were going to be like two and a half hours, so I'm really happy that we're not. Um, But, yeah, so I hope we covered everything. I think Um, we did. Um, Like always, we'll have our, you know, uh, information linked down in the description box below. All the patterns that we talked about, some of the yarn brands that we talked about. If we can find their websites, yeah, um, our if, contact information, all of that stuff is located down below there. Our PO box too, so our address. If you need to or would like to send us anything, it's all down in the hit more and more, more in and that more. description, and everything's there. We also have a link to a Google Doc that includes. I we forget to mention this coupon codes that are available to you guys, and there mm-hmm. are vendors like Naughty Knitting Sacks, um, Knit Swag. Trilogy Yarns, um, Always Queenie Believe. Some really, really good ones. Yeah, there's and, a there's a ton listed there. Yeah. Um, we do try to keep that up as updated as possible. And I think that's everything. So again, we'll be at Connecticut Sheep and Wool in two weeks. That Saturday, so feel free to um, see us. That is and Ochoa. then I think after that, we might be going to uh, Knit New Haven. Oh, after the after same that. day. But I know some of the people from our knit group at the library are going to Yarn Barn. So because we'll that's also local yeah. yarn store day. So um, I know. be sure to stop by your local yarn store day if you have one or if you have the ability to do so and support them. And we will be back in two weeks. Until then, we hope that you guys have a good fortnight. Bye. Bye.